Hello and welcome to the next part of the um, Lab Builder Unleashed for um, Networker NMM with Exchange and Hyper-V. Uh, in the last part we successfully did some post installation tasks of the Exchange Database Availability Group setup and started a backup. So because I didn't want to wa wait for the backup to be finished, uh, I stopped the recording and now we are here where the uh, backup is actually finished. So the backup itself took like 14 minutes and I backed up a total of 800 max. Um, so what was it doing? It went out to the database availability group and um, created the active database server and backed up each database copy. So everything was successful and transferred to my data domain um, by using libdd boost. Um, so everything is fine. You could also check for what is happening in the networker log. So you're actually seeing that the um, snapshots are created and then get mounted um, um, and afterwards they get deported. So everything works just ni uh, nice and clean as we expected it. Um, also, we can see that here in, in the backup log that I was uh, running where the import has been done and the last one that was deported was the placeholder um, which is the um, uh, information about the VSS snapshot that's also being backed up. And here you see on the 2013 um, node number two, which is our passive server, that the backup has been taken uh, by doing the database snapshots and all that stuff. Um, before we go on and create a restore, um, I will just do one thing. I show you where all the um, sources come from. So if we go to backslash backslash VMware host, we can see the shared folders directory. And in the shared folders directory, you have your sources up here. So that's the one that you are uh, should create um, on your local hard drive or on the uh, mount VHD. Um, and there are my network sources um, for Windows and there are my NMM sources. Um, if we go to NMM, because the only thing that I can't install automatically right now is the um, is the GLR feature, which means the um, device driver for mounting. So we go again on the setup of NMM, and it takes a few seconds, and this requires actually a reboot, so we do it on the second node. Um, and what we have to do is we go on change, and we add granular restore. So I will check out how to install this um, automatically in the future, but currently um, I don't. Uh, it doesn't allow for doing it. So we leave the directories um, to the defaults. Um, okay, and that we can use to the default as well. We have to specify again some information: username, nmm backup, user, and the password is password one two three pass p a s s v o r d one two three. Next and we change the setup. So it takes a few moments. After this, we have to restart that node. So we close this one and this one out here. So we switch over to the node one right now and from the ECP from our admin user, we switch to OWA to Outlook Web Access and open Outlook web, web Access. And you can see there is a alert coming from my data domain or a summary from my data domain. So this is the configuration and log summary of my data domain. Um, why does it happen? Um, normally we use a default mail host um, for sending alerts to, and in this case, I named it mail host. And what I did on the Exchange Database Availability Group, I set up an SMTP server that's called mail host. So you are able to send um, to a DNS alias called mailhost that sends ma mails automatically to the um, exchange environment. So whatever you do, if you're using um, Networker, because that sends, the default per, uh, sends per default to mailhost, or a data domain, or whatever you have, just use the term mailhost to um, send your alerts to. So here we are asked to install the LOS file system driver. This is the driver for mounting the data domain devices back to our environment. And again, this takes a while. Um, so um, 
we just go here and close the backup stuff. So once this is finished, we click on finish and we are asked to do a reboot. Uh, we do this, shouldn't take too long um, doing the reboot um, on the virtual environment because there is no expensive memory checking and we restart the system and we will be up and running in a few seconds and from there we start a or we try a restore so that will be the first restore after the setup that we've done um, hopefully it will work um, one thing to mention I do an auto login every time and you are not getting locked off this is okay and this is pretty good for a demo environment otherwise Windows would put you off every few um, 10 minutes um, this is has nothing to do with the screensavers. Um, this is from beginning from Windows Server 2012. And this is um, done by the power saving. So there's a script. Um, there are two scripts actually. One sets the user account control, and the other one sets the screensaver power options. You can find them in the scripts directory just if you want to use them for your own purposes. So now we start Networker User for Microsoft in order to. Um, do um, granular, granular level restores. Uh, we run it as administrator and the first thing it asks me for the networker server so we say update server list and it broadcasts for the networker server and once he's found the networker server um, we just click and connect to networker server.labbuilder.local that's the one we select and say OK here so once the um, networker module for Microsoft is loaded, um, we are connected to the default browsing of the client Exchange 2013 N2. Um, since we backed up the database availability group with the LabBuilder DAG name, we select this one as the client. Um, it's always a good advice to follow what's happening in the monitoring tab because right now he's browsing for snapshots, save sets and all that stuff. So um, we wait for this to be finished and the client selection change to Lab Builder DRG right now. In the recover session window right now we select the granular recover. Granular recover means the ability to recover directly single individual items from tabs mounted um, or advanced file type devices or um, data domain devices mounted into the network file system. So we select the lab builder DAG here. That's the one we want to recover before we start this. I do two things. I open an Internet Explorer and browse to my mailbox. And I use my mailbox and the password is welcome one. And you see there is only one message in the inbox. We might want to delete this if we want. Um, just to demonstrate you what happens here, we also de delete the deleted items in here, so this one is permanent, permanently gone. Um, the next thing that we do is we launch the exchange management shell. And connect to the scope of um, the database and we say get mailbox database now it tells me okay there are currently three databases mounted one is mounted on the server n1 the other one on n2 and the database availability group database itself is mounted on the n1 um, and there is no recovery database mounted once we start this progress here we can say recover from here or we can say recover from here it starts the recovery which means um, it will mount the file type device or the data domain volume into the recovery database um, by just mounting that volume to the NVFS file system, the networker file system. Always good advice, click the monitoring tab, you will see what's going to happen. Um, so right now he's trying to create the NVS, NVFS volume, virtual cached volume and mount that um, to data domain. <laughs> will take a few moments right now he's creating the GLRDBs that means he's creating an empty uh, database that we can use for recover if we do get mailbox database we can see that database here as well and it's a recovery database now he's trying to mount 
the networker file system database that we just remounted um, into the recovery database itself um, and he needs to set some stuff like uh, the override flag um, for the recovery database and some other, other stuff that means this database can be overwritten by restore it will take a few moments and we also can see that he is recovering a the safe set catalog um, which is the um, XML files being part of the VSS backup. Once this is done <coughs> he's established an exchange shell and the exchange shell is there for browsing into the individual databases. So um, also the logs are being mounted um, into, you can see this here, NSR temp NVFS networker file system logs. We might also want to browse to this directory, so we can look in here. That we can. Now he pops up that the individual items are right now ready for recover. And if we go to that directory network of virtual file system, we can see that database that we have in here and we have the logs directory. Um, and this is actually the database file that we have right now for recover. So we can close this. And he told us now with the pop-up um, that individual items are there for recover. So we can select our database again. <coughs> and it will browse into the individual items. So we have this GLRDB right now here that we can drill down and go to my mailbox, essentially, and select stuff from my inbox. So we don't want to have the full one. We only want to have stuff from the inbox. We want to have my welcome message and then we can click recover. Let's go back to my mailbox. There is nothing in deleted items. There is nothing in my inbox, nothing else. When we click the recover option, um, we have the possibility to select restore to PST target, uh, to a PST file, um, or some other stuff. So we don't want to have this. We need to stand, we use the standard options, which will create a um, recover folder in my mailbox database. This will take a few moments. And we also could browse to the monitor tab here and see what's going to happen. So he's starting a PowerShell command and you see here this recovered item folder now being part in my mailbox. And he sent it a restore request and once this restore request is completed, the items will be available in my mailbox um, and if I do a refresh in here you will see the mail sitting in my inbox that I can now drag and drop back to the inbox itself. Okay, that's on recovering exchange individual items with GLR. Stay tuned for the next session which might be probably um, Networker with um, SQL Server always on availability groups. So thank you and stay tuned.